Good morning, everybody. Just going to be letting everyone in. Good morning. Okay, I think that is everybody for now. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, give me one second, let me just let a few more people in. There we go. So thank you so much everyone for joining us today for this workshop with Angela Chow. We're going to be making paper bouquets for Mother's Day. So I wanted to tell you about the Border Crossings Project, which this uh, workshop is part of. It's presented by the Art Gallery of Mississauga and is generously funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation through the GROW Grant, the Ontario Arts Council, and the City of Mississauga's Cultural Division. Now, borders are challenges faced physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. They can both connect and divide, shared by the art of storytelling. Recognizing and sharing these border crossings allows us to understand ourselves and others differently. Instead of groups of people separated by arbitrary distinctions, we are all individuals who experience pivotal moments of change that shape the contours of the narratives of our lives. So we invite you to come and explore all of these stories with us at Border Crossings. I'd like to take a, take a moment to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather and which the region of Peel operates is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, Indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron-Wenda, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, the land that is home of the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations, who are the direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the credit. We are grateful to have this opportunity to work on this land and by doing so give our respect to its first inhabitants. We continue to respect this land as we move forward with today's workshop. So this workshop is being recorded. We're going to post it to YouTube afterwards for those who were unable to attend today but also for those of you who would like to redo this workshop with your family and friends. I'm going to launch a poll shortly and we're gonna take a minute to just answer those questions. So because we are recording this, I just wanna remind you that if you are uncomfortable with your face showing on YouTube, feel free to turn off your camera. During this workshop, if you have any questions, we just ask that you type it into the chat box and I will moderate it for Angela, um, just because we do have a lot of participants here and that will, uh, that will streamline that. At the end of this workshop, we will be asking you to turn your cameras on so we can take a screenshot of all of the wonderful projects that you guys have created today. If you're uncomfortable with showing your face, feel free to hold your art in front. So we're just going to leave the poll up for a few more seconds. Just waiting on a few more people. Perfect. So my name is Christina and I'm part of the Border Crossings Project. We also have Daniel, who is part of the Border Crossings team as well, who is uh, going to be co-facilitating today. And I would like to introduce you all to our amazing facilitator for our bouquet today, and that is Angela Chow. Hi everyone, my name is Angela Chow. I'm a resident here in Mississauga. And my border crossing uh, story, I had a concussion about five years ago and I went through a lot of depression and anxiety and through that I started creating art and I started releasing everything I felt inside onto my canvas that you see behind me. So I've done a couple hundred paintings. Uh, I've been the recipient for the Emerging Artist Award with Mississauga Arts Council, as well as receiving grants and Heritage Mississauga Awards. Um, 
And yeah, that's what that's this is what I do on my weekends. This is what I do to help me release a lot of tensions inside of me. So I like to share that with you and I like to share that with others, which is why I keep creating. So today we will be making this paper bouquet in card form or a frame. So if you are able to share the other video, the lower one, Christina, Christina, could you pin the other video? Yep, it should be there. Okay, so let's just talk about materials. First of all, you'll be able to uh, print these items on my website, which will be posted shortly if you haven't already done so. So these are just printables, uh, mason jars, and then you'll also print out some flowers, which looks like this. Not color them. And this we will end up cutting and creating our paper flower bouquet. So does everyone have all their materials ready, including the paper cutouts, uh, sorry, the printables, pencil crayons if you wanted to add some flair, scissors to cut the paper flowers, and if there's any kids in this workshop, feel free to ask for some help from your parents. Um, I have some markers in which we're going to write the affirmations that we can talk about later, and it doesn't have to be Happy Mother's Day. It can be whatever you'd like. I have a glue gun here, which is really hot glue sticks. And also during the workshop, I will be asking questions and you're welcome to join in or not. So this is the prompt uh, for the questions. Does everyone have all their materials ready? Shall we get started? If anyone needs a few minutes, let us know and we will keep chatting. So you can, yes. Sorry, and again, I'll be moderating the chat. So if you have anything that you need to let us know, feel free to type it. I'll be watching. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christina. So from these paper flowers, this is the first one that I have. I'm just taking some pencil crayons and I'm adding some details, and I'll show you what it's going to look like. Little added details will look just like that. A little bit of dimension in the flowers themselves. So feel free to color within the lines or even outside of the lines. If you cut outside the line, color outside the lines, that's fine because you're actually gonna cut it out. So just give your flowers some dimension. And we'll start with that. I already have a question from Carol Angela. And the question is, um, could we put this in an envelope? Um, I'll show you the thickness of it. It's about one centimeter thick, the flowers that have been printed. So. I feel like it could get squished. You would have to build it up on the sides with maybe some padding so that the flowers do not get squished. Or you can buy a drop shadow frame and have a piece of glass over it. That would possibly work as well. So just spend a couple of minutes coloring your flowers. This is the most relaxing process. So question everyone, where are you all from? Like I was saying, I'm from Mississauga. Uh, my background is my parents are from Taiwan and I was born in Edmonton. Where is everyone else from? I don't have that, the color template. You don't need to use um, colored paper. I actually use white paper to show that any color can be used. For example, this flower is white and you can color in to add dimension, or you can use colored paper. California, welcome, Carol. Welcome, Linda. So you do not need color paper. So just keep coloring it in. Do you find paper thickness affects the outcome? I, I like to use a thinner paper because it's actually a lot easier to wind up because you'll see the next process is a little bit more tedious and you have to wind it really tightly to get the inside of the flower and then it goes wider and wider. So I would say the thinner cards, uh, the thinner regular printer paper is a great 
flour. And then when it comes to making the card, this is the thicker cardstock, just to give it some, some uh, thickness. Yes. When we post up our social media links, I actually have um, the video made for this workshop already so that anyone can follow along and teach it to your friends or share it with whomever you'd like. Because during this workshop, it does take time to roll up these flowers and to cut them. So we may only get two or three or four little flowers done. But when the workshop ends, you can take everything that you've learned and apply it and create a larger bouquet. So we'll just keep coloring in. And if you wanted to leave your flowers white, that's fine. You Then you can skip this process. The next, the next step once everyone is done coloring in is we're actually gonna cut out the flower using scissors. And kids, if you can't use scissors, just ask for help. You're very welcome, Tia. What is your, oh, let me use my prompt. What is everyone's go-to craft? or go to hobby. So for me, I live in Meadowvale in Mississauga and there's a lot of fantastic trails. So my go to release is usually biking. I can just step out of my back door and go biking for many kilometers. It reaches a Meadowvale town center to uh, Aaron Mills Mall. So I can really get to a lot of places by bike and I get some fresh air. Um, so it makes me feel really relaxed. So what's everyone's go-to hobby? So I'm just grabbing a secondary color now. I'm just grabbing some orange and I'm just giving it some life. So once you're done your flower, feel free to move on to your second flower. We'll, we'll try to color in three and we'll start cutting and then we'll do the process all over again if we have more time. And we'll just color in some flowers. I love this part because I don't have to stay in the lines. <laughs> just color right out, out of the lines because I know it'll be cut out. I want to show you Oh, I want to show you uh, something else. I actually took a sheet of music and I made a, I colored it in with watercolor, watercolor paints, just a really light thin wash. And then I made my paper uh, flower this way instead of just using a plain paper, which I'm really excited to explore. So I'm going to try that next time as well. So I'm going to do that today. But yeah, you can use different patterned paper. You could probably use like a wallpaper as a nice thick one. You can use maybe even craft paper from Michaels um, because of the patterns. So I'm gonna definitely explore more pattern paper for my flowers. Okay, so I almost have one, one flower done. There we go. And there's my second flower. I'll just add some details to this. And what I found is once you cut out the flowers, there's two sides of the flowers. There's the side that you colored and then the back side. So it's great to give the back side a little bit of color as well. So I could see through where the printer, where the printer uh, ink is. So I just give it a little bit of a color just so it's not plain white on one side. But I've also made uh, this paper bouquet with just white flowers uh, for my mom in a drop shadow frame and it was gorgeous. So you don't need to have a colored bouquet. You can just make it fully white if you wish to. I'm just coloring in orange. So that would be my first completed, my second completed flower colored in the back really loosely. I'll add some details here. At this point, if, if you guys are using um, a hot glue gun, you should plug it in to heat it up because we'll be cutting in probably uh, less than 10 minutes and then I'll teach you how to glue it all together. 
and I'll do the process a couple times. I pre-cut a couple flowers. Um, so I'll share it with you a few times just in case there's any questions. But it's, it's pretty easy. Once you get the hang of it, you could just do it in front of the TV. And I'm just coloring this beautiful daisy here. Just adding more color. So Angela, yeah. Vic, Vicky uh, printed her flowers. However, it's not large. It's about two inches all on one page. That, that's really small because a flower that's printed on an eight by 10 like this is going to turn out to something like, like this maybe. So I would suggest if you have the ability to, to just print it out one per page. Perfect. Does that help, Vicki? And Vicki, if you, if for some reason you do fall behind and you don't have it printed, I do have it on uh, YouTube. The link is just above that Christina posted. And when we upload this to YouTube, we'll also be emailing all the participants the YouTube link as well. Perfect. So it's just another colored in flower and I've already colored, colored in the back previously. So now I have two flowers done. I'll finish up one more and then I'll show you how to cut it, which all you do if, if you're an adult, just cut on the black lines. If you're a kid, just ask for a parent for help and just cut along the black lines. And we'll try to get three of them cut out and start, we'll start rolling them. Um, Vicki, maybe in the printer setting, you can just print one page, how it says like, if it says page one to seven, maybe just print page one or page two or whichever one you want. So this case, I just actually used marker for some of the details. Um, so these are just the lines that I used from, with just a Crayola marker, but you can use whichever marker you would like. After this one, I'm gonna jump ahead and show you how to cut it. And I'll continue to color and uh, answer any questions from the previous step, because I will be doing this step many, many, many times. I have a question for you, Angela. Yeah. What's up? What is your favorite color to make the flowers? I have to say, I think I'm leaning more towards the pinks. I've always liked pink. I'm, um, more of a girly girl sometimes. So I think I enjoy the different spectrums of pinks, purples, lavenders, whites. Um, but I've also seen online people who make just flowers in one color in a drop shadow box and it is gorgeous. So I really also like just plain white. I've only done that once because making one takes a long time. So you'd have to spend like hours to make a drop shadow box. So I'm going to start cutting. I'll just show you guys how it is done and then you can continue on. So this, this part is quite, quite a very long process. So I'm just gonna cut, cut along the black lines, that's it. And in the end, it'll look like this. So we'll try to, if you've finished coloring three flowers, we'll try to cut out those three flowers and then I'll loop back because we're going to have to do this a few times. So I'll cut it out and then I'll show you how to make the flowers and then I'll cut it out again. So. What is everyone doing this weekend? Does anyone have any special plans? I am dropping flowers at my mom's house as well as my mother-in-law's house. 
and I'm gonna say happy Mother's Day to them from the porch. Um, I don't think I've done any visits with them since maybe last year. Uh, they are older, so I do not want, um, I wanna keep them safe. So we're all masked up. We're, we stand on the porch. My mom has a patio, so we just sit, we sit on the backyard patio deck and we chat. And um, I also try to go for walks with them, but uh, they don't they don't like to leave the house. So I'm excited to see my mom. I'm excited to see my mother-in-law and just give them hugs and tell them how much I love them. And I'm gonna give one of them my beautiful Mother's Day card that I made. Um, so later on, once we start rolling up the flowers, we're gonna uh, chat about daily affirmations or things that you may want to write on the mason jar. Um, so you can start brainstorming. These can be short little quotes. You can Google short quotes. It could say, for example, I love you, or like you see, happy Mother's Day, or manifest your dreams, or love yourself, or I am enough. So think of something short you like to write on your card. And then we will do that at the very end uh, in marker. And also, if you want to leave a blank like I have here, you can feel free to do so. It's actually pr really pretty blank. So I'm still cutting out my first flower. After I cut out this flower, I'm going to show you how to roll it up for those who are in the same stage. And then I'm going to go back to cutting again. And then I'll roll it up. Just because everyone might be at a different stage uh, when it comes to this flower. almost done and then we're going to use a glue gun and uh, wheel up the flower from the outside and I'll show everyone how to do that. I saw online on Instagram a person who keeps all their scrap paper like this and they put it in the blender and they actually make their own uh, painting like a watercolor type paper, a thicker paper to paint on. So I'm going to start keeping my scraps and I actually might make paper with it because I find it is wasteful. I just end up recycling the bits I don't use, but it would be really cool to see that in paper remade and recycled and reused again. I am almost done my one flower. I have one question about the principles. Yeah. Are the flowers that you have in the center, the larger one, is it printed but to a different scale or is it the more rings, the larger the flower? Um, it's printed It's printed to, to a different scale. Like there are, I'll just show you. So there's different types of the flower. So with more petals will come more rings. So in this case, there's tons of petals. In this case, this is a larger scale with more petals. And in this case, it's a similar flower, but less petals. So that's the difference. There's also ones that are pointy. This one would probably look, if this was on yellow, it would look more like a daisy with a dark center. 
And then these little ones, this is probably, you could probably print four on a piece of paper would be equal to the size of this. So you can experiment a lot with the different sizes and see what fits. I usually just print a random amount of sizes of flowers and I, I arrange it at the very end. That's the most fun part is seeing all your progress, finishing the flowers, having it in your hand and then arranging it. Cause it's this part that's the hardest right now. I'm almost done my one flower and I will show you how to wind it up after. And I've discovered actually doing this many like a hundred times. Um, the easy way with, is actually with a needle nose plier or the, the thing that plucks your eyebrow, the, what are these called? Pinchers, tweezers, a pair of tweezers, uh, just to hold it in place. Cause I, I hold it with my finger, um, but it's easier with a tweezer. That's what I found. So, um, yay, I'm done. Okay, next step, I'm gonna show you how to wind this up. And if you're not at this step, you can just watch and listen because I'm gonna do this again. So this is my finished cut flower. And what I'm gonna do is, I'll do this one with my finger because I didn't mention the tweezers before. I'm gonna roll it up from the outside to the inside. So I'm gonna roll it all the way up like this. So, and then I'm gonna add glue every little bit. So I'm just like rolling it up like this, just with my fingers. And then that the one side should be flat, just like this. So the one side is always flat. And you can be tight on the beginning and then you can start getting looser for bigger flowers. Then every few rolls, I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue to seal it. And then I'm gonna continue. So this is always flat because it's gonna lie flat on the paper. Okay, let me show to you from a different angle. So this is what the flower looks like. There are gaps in different areas, so it doesn't need to be wound up super tight, but it's almost flat. It's almost flat on one side. So I'm just gonna keep winding it up. Let's see. Ooh, got a nice job. Now I'm just being, leaving larger spaces like that so that the flower will get a bit bigger. And then in this case, this has a little round dot. I'm gonna add a lot of glue to that and add it to the bottom. A bit too big, so I'm actually going to just cut away the excess. I don't need that much. So this is what my rolled up flower looks like. So it's flat on one side and it looks a little bit like this. So now the next step for this flower is just to bend the petals a little bit back just to open it up a little bit. So I'm just I'm not really even making a fold. I'm just creating a very small bend. This looks a little bit like a, a lotus actually. See, if this was colored in yellow, it would have been a daisy. So that is my flower. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. So that's what it looks like. So pretty, I love this one. 
Okay, so let's go back to the previous steps again and we'll cut another one out. So we'll just keep repeating the process over and over again. So I'm going to try a smaller flower so you can see the difference in size. And I've previously colored this in three different shades as suggested by one of my little kid attendees last time. So I'm just going to cut this out and we'll roll it up again. Is anyone having um, any issues? Do you have any questions about this process so far? Once you get the hang of it, I just binge watch a show and I could make a bunch. You just print it out, color it in, cut it out, roll it up and repeat. So the smaller you print uh, your printables, the smaller the flowers will be. So in this case, this is probably going to be a quarter of the size of the previous flower because um, you can fit four on a sheet, whereas the other one you could only fit one on a sheet of paper. And I guess if you wanted to make bigger flowers, you'd have to join multiple sheets of paper together, unless you have like an industrial large printer. Does anyone in here play any musical instruments? I have a keyboard. I wouldn't consider myself a player. I just like to play around and this is my craft room that we're in right now. And at night it actually turns it, I call it Club Chow, which is my last name Chow. And my husband DJs, he plays the, the different sound effects on the keyboard. So there's like a cat and a dog and like a horse and a bell. <laughs> <laughs> so at nighttime it turns to, into a club chow, which is a dance club uh, for just us two, because we can't go out and dance. So that's what we enjoy the keyboard. We just experiment and play around with different sounds. And recently I had the keyboard hooked up to my laptop and I can play from there and make interesting arrangements. Ukulele, oh, I love that. How many strings is the ukulele? Is it the same amount of strings as the guitar? Or is it four? It's four, yeah. I'm almost done cutting my flower and then I'm gonna show you how to wind it up again. And like I said, in this workshop, we might only get three flowers done, uh, but you can continue this workshop afterwards. Just printing, printing your flowers in different dimensions and then coloring it in, in different colors. I also have a clarinet. Um, I haven't played in a long time, but I bought new reeds recently and I have this steel drum which I really adore. I have a steel one and I have a few wooden ones. I just find it really relaxing. And I also have um, a native flute. Um, what else do I have? I, I seem to have a lot of instruments. Makes me makes me really happy. Um, though I, I can't say I can play any of them well. What's your favorite instrument? Really care. Oh, I have this wooden drum. It's it's the same I it's the same idea idea as the steel drum, but it's wood. And it is gorgeous. It's made by a maker in Quebec who I met at the One of a Kind show, uh, and it comes in different keys. Um, if we get to finish early, I'll run downstairs to grab it. But that is my ultimate favorite. I like the native flute a lot. Um, I purchased it from a person who sells native flutes and he actually played all the flutes and I chose the one that was Afronesia, uh, made in Africa at a certain frequency. So it really resonated with me and that was the one that I wanted. 
Um, and I've played with him before, this person that sold it to me. Uh, I really adore the native flute because it's more about, you don't use sheet music. It's more about what you feel, expressing what you feel, which is what I also like about the piano and experimenting with the piano and different chords and how each chord could make you feel, you know, a minor chord could make you feel a little bit uneasy, whereas a major chord might make you feel happier depending on the, the beat and the tone. So this is my flower compared to the large one, which is about a quarter of the size. So let's see what this little guy looks like when we roll her up. So we're gonna roll her up from the edge again. I'm gonna put a glue every maybe few inches. So this time, okay, I'm gonna start it off. Do you play an instrument, Christina? I am learning how to play the guitar. Oh, awesome. How oh, wonderful. We have an electric guitar as well. <laughs> I think we own every instrument. I just really, I really enjoy music. Just it's similar to art. It's a great release. Since my concussion, I use art to help me release a lot of things. And my work is really stressful. So having a creative side um, on weekends, just being able to let go and not have to think about work is very beneficial to my mental health. Actually, there's a documentary coming out uh, through the Mississauga Arts Council and Bell Media <clears throat> that I worked on that deals with organizations in Mississauga um, that use art or being creative for your mental health. And they actually interview individuals in the organization. They've interviewed 20 people. So I did the opening credits for it just a time-lapse video of painting and as well as the graphics in the, the documentary. And uh, I actually started during at the beginning of the pandemic, I started on my YouTube page, an interview series called Mississauga Creates, where I interviewed uh, local creatives and asked them about how they use their type of arts for their mental health. So I've interviewed Arlene, the musician songwriter, um, pianist, I've interviewed um, a music therapist, I've talked to the Mississauga Library about the benefits of reading, especially on kids and their mental health for this time during the pandemic. I've talked to visual artists and how they're, how they're using art and how it's a really a new form of art because there are no galleries, everything is online viewing and how we as artists have had to adapt in this time to create something different and you know still being able to share but not in the physical form anymore but in a digital form um speaking of mental health june uh just wrote that she's actually in a group and she entertains customers at an outdoor cafe every friday morning and they just started performing again now that they can meet in groups of six outside oh that's wonderful if you're part of June, if you're part of the, I'm not sure, did you say you're in Mississauga? If you're part of the Mississauga Arts Council, you'd be able to promote it through there and have lots of people. I guess you don't want a lot of people, but you could have people join, join in. I know River North, um, Heather and her husband, Matt, Matt uh, Zadie do performances at long-term care homes. Um, so I think that's really wonderful. Thank you, June, for doing that. June is joining us from London, England. Ah, okay, not Mississauga. So look at this teeny tiny flower. And this is colored in in three different colors. Look how cute it is. That's adorable. It's so cute. So let me show it to you compared to this flower. So I'm not going to cut any more flowers. I'm just going to keep winding them up but you guys can keep on your own process. That way we can, I can show you how to put everything together. Because in 15 minutes, we're gonna be winding down this workshop, but you can continue this later on as well. So I'll just keep winding it up. This went really fast. <laughs> I could have talked forever. So, so the series that um, I created on YouTube was just, pretty much because we couldn't really go out and talk to people. And I, I wanted to learn a bit more about other people's 
ways and why they create what they create. Um, so that's why I started the interview series. And from there, Mississauga Arts Council actually had a grant that was perfectly fit for me. It was dealing with uh, South Asian women and I changed the dialogue around and it was more about um, why do South Asian women create and what leads them to create and what barriers do they have to go through? So the documentary is gonna be, is called Driven to Create. It's completed. I'm just waiting for uh, rights from NFB and then Mississauga Arts Council will be scheduling some type of digital screening since we can't do it in person. Um, yeah, that was the grant I received last year through the Mississauga Arts Council. The previous year I received um, the Fusion Art Grant, which I created seven pieces of art based on different emotions that I go through, that we all go through. And uh, poet Susan Kezelpolsky wrote uh, poems based on the seven emotions and a musician who is a native flute player I was speaking of uh, brought his chakra flutes and he actually played seven unique pieces for each uh, piece of artwork that was created. And it was a bit, it was like a performance piece. So we performed in different cafes, um, Central Library, different places in Mississauga. And it was also, you could participate. So we would teach you how to write the poem. You would look at the piece of artwork and tell us how you felt about it. Um, so that was the previous year's grant. And right now, if you are in Mississauga, Mississauga Arts Council has just released the new uh, micro grants that are coming out. There's a career development grant for $1,000. And there's also uh, a matchmaker grant for 2,500, which means you can, whatever project you're working on, you can apply for funding and it will be matched. So if you spend $1,000 on your project, um, they will match that. That's why it's called the matchmaker grant. So those are for those in Mississauga. Um, I'm guessing you have to be part of the Mississauga Arts Council, but um, it's, it's like $30 a year. It's well worth it for the wealth of information that you receive. So there's my other flower. This is a white flower, no coloring. So you do not need colored paper to make this. And there's it beside my pink flower and beside my teeny tiny rose. Isn't that pretty? So I'll try to wind up a couple more flowers and then I'll show you how to arrange it on your card. Has everybody thought of their affirmation yet or what you're gonna write on the card? I'm gonna continue on with Happy Mother's Day. Um, but like I said before, you could say, you could write if it's not for your mom, if it's for your grandma, you could write, I love you. You can write happy grandmother's day. <laughs> you could write any, anything you want. That's nice and short. Just, it'll just be written in marker. So I'm just doing this nice and loose because I'm going to do a really big flower. And I'm doing it a lot faster than when I did when I first started, because it just gets easier. You get used to it. You get used to the hand motion. So it's like second nature right now. I think I'm the most impatient scissor cutter ever. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I have, I actually have a Cricut machine and I pre-cut everything, which is what these flowers are. A Cricut machine is this, a cutter, it cuts out vinyl decals, stickers, papers, uh, and if you go on the higher model called the Cricut Maker, you can cut it. You can cut leather, um, balsa wood, uh, but I have the the other model, which is the air, so I can do paper. So I do that a lot for my paper crafts. It's a lot easier, but for this workshop, I cut it out by hand. I am also a very impatient person, which is why I get a lot done, because I can do a million things at once. 
Okay, see, this one I rolled out a lot larger. It was the exact same size as this, and it's looking a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's going to be my last flower for the time being. And what I'm going to do is going to be actually the card. So I'm just going to take some cardstock. I'm going to fold it in half. Always blooming. That's a great one. This is just a piece of cardstock paper. It's yellow. I think it's going to pop for Mother's Day. I'm just folding it in half to make a card. If you choose uh, not to do that, you can always just put it in a frame like this and hang it on your wall. So there's many things that you can do with this. So there's my card, it's folded in half. And I'm just gonna take my mason jar and I'm just gonna cut it out and I'll glue it, I'll glue it on. So I'm just. And if you wanted to add details, you could always draw something in the background. You can draw leaves. It doesn't need to be just the flowers. So after this, we're going to start arranging the flowers and gluing it on. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape and I'll tape it down. And I'm going to write Happy Mother's Day. Uh, you can write whatever you would like because I want to give one to my mom and one to my mother-in-law. So I'll just put, I'll put it in the center somewhere. I'm going to use pink and I'm just going to write Happy Mother's Day. Always blooming. I love that. I almost want to write that. I'm going to write Always Blooming. So. Always blooming. Okay, now the fun part. We're going to arrange the flowers. So I have a big pink one, I have a little white one, which maybe I'll put higher up. I have a little pink one. And I have a teeny tiny one. What do you think? Does, does that look good? Maybe I'll put this one down below. And I'm going to add to this once the workshop is done. I'm just going to add more flowers. So that's what I have. So I'm going to glue these down with the glue gun. So pretty. I'm going to try to get one more done while I'm here. Yes, uh, Christina has just posted our YouTube links. Please follow Art Gallery of Mississauga on YouTube and Instagram for more workshops and workshops like this. And follow me. I'm on Instagram where I'll post any workshops I have upcoming. Um, and on my YouTube page is a lot of craft tutorials. Uh, I call it make something every day where I create things from repurposed stuff from my home. So I have in one of my videos, I had an old pair of canvas shoes that I decided to paint and make it look new or any type of paper crafts, um, painted rocks. I have lots of free tutorials on there. So feel free to follow me if you would like to learn more about crafting. So I'm just wheeling up my very last pink flower and we will slowly wind down this workshop. When you guys are done your card or framed uh, piece of art, 
Who are you giving it to? I'm just curious. I'm going to give mine to my mother and my mother-in-law. Mama son, you're gonna give it to your mother wonderful. She is going to adore it. Okay, there's my last pink flower. I'm gonna just put it here. Everyone, in a few minutes, we're going to finish up um, our paper bouquet, and then Christina will be taking a photo of it. So like she mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, if you don't want your face seen, that's perfectly fine. Just hold the piece in front of your face. And there is my finished bouquet. I'm going to add other flowers a bit later on. The mini one is so cute. My favorite. I'm going to put this mini one on too. There you go. This is my, my beautiful bouquet. I'm going to add some details because the paper looks a little bit. I hope everyone had a great time today and I hope you learned something new and you're able to take this and apply it to other things. Thank you very much for joining myself and the Art Gallery of Mississauga today. And it was really relaxing. I have a great time always. So I'm just drawing some leaves and filling in, filling in some space. You can skip this step if you like, here's the way it is. So there it is, I am complete. There's one on yellow cardstock and here's one on pink. Thank you very much, June. Thank you, Sherry. Once everyone is done, we'll be able to take our photo together. You're welcome, Vicki. Is everyone almost ready to take their photo? Oh, beautiful, Sherry, that's so nice. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just hold mine up and once everyone holds theirs up, we can take an awesome photo. Nice job, Vicki. That's gonna look beautiful once you cut it out. Uh, Tristan, just hold it a little bit further. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love the colors. Great job. All right, just give me one second. I'm almost done taking a shot. If everyone can hold up their beautiful pieces. 
Oh, I love the way Vicki did. It reminds me of the sunshine. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us. It was so much fun. Thank you. It was fun. That thank you, awesome. everybody. Yeah, thank you, Angela. That was so much fun. You're so fun. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll see, we'll see you again. Make sure you follow along with our gallery of Mississauga on Instagram to find out, find out more of the shops. And your movie, can you tell us when your movie is launching?